hey guys welcome back to my youtube channel yep in this video i'm going to be talking about interview questions questions that was asked that landed me this healthcare assistant job and also answering them to the best of my knowledge guys one thing you should know is that these people here are very nice when before your interview is normal for you to be 10 but guys the moment you pick the call and you post start communicating trust me you will be so relaxed like these people they are so nice when it comes to communication they are very good at it they don't pressure you it's not like nigeria interview when you start when people start pressurizing you the first question i got was introduce yourself see guys if you watch my last video where i talked about how i created my cv that got me this ed assistant job you i made mention of what i wrote in my personal statement so when they are asking you to introduce yourself they don't want to hear my name is this i went to um social primary school i went to university i am a graduate if you guys can remember i told you that you don't need to be a graduate to get this healthcare assistant job. So why are you telling them you are a graduate? When they ask you questions like this, go straight to the point. It is very necessary. Go straight to the point. Tell them, like, I am a carer who is passionate about rendering professional, high quality and supportive care. You understand? To service user or to individual in a manner which maximizes their you understand their quality of life their choices and stuff like that and you can also mention that you understand the 50 care standard and personal duty you know what you wrote to your cv cram it if it's possible but you, you might end up coming it and forget so you should add you should, this is something you know healthcare assistant stuff you've been making research is something you should have on your head already so you can just say it like that to them that you can also mention that you get commended at your place of work for rendering dignified and dependable care to service user or to clients you understand so that is how to introduce yourself nobody cares if your father is that body nobody cares if you are five feet seven feet tall nobody cares all they care about is are you fit for this job are you fit for this role can you really handle clients the next question is what are your weaknesses so guys this question is kind of tricky when you're asking this question you should be very careful of what you say now they ask you what are your weaknesses in this part you don't have to say weakness in line with your what you're going there to do like for example you cannot just say um i get tired easily i cannot work under pressure that's my weakness like you don't feel <laughs> Don't even bother that they are going to call you back. You understand? You can say weaknesses like outside the work. For example, you can say public speaking is your weakness. And so when you say things like that, they'll say, okay, it makes more sense because they don't have anything to be afraid of when they employ you. I don't know if I'm making sense, guys. So please be guided. When they ask you of your weaknesses, don't say lack of communication. Um, I'm shy. I don't have confidence in myself, low self-esteem, like sometimes, why? It's not necessary, please. The next one is, what are your strengths? So when we ask you questions like this, what are your strengths? You can say you have patience. See, when you're working with these people, you need to be very patient. I am patient. I can work under pressure. I have good communication skills and ability to work in a team because this work is not just for you there are some patients that cannot move their body they are like due to stroke and stuff like that in that kind of scenario only you cannot handle the patient they will pair you up with someone else and you need to be you need to be able to work with the person there are some people that cannot work with people I don't even know how they do so the next question you should expect or the next question that was asked was what is moving and handling you see yeah don't go and do wasabi i just give them definition let them take it like that because i'm actually right i don't need to say 
50,000 words before they will know that, yes, you know what you are saying. Moving and handling is actually broad, but you can just give them the simple definition of what you understand. And also, they ask me what is safeguarding, confidentiality, questions like that. See, guys, I'm answering it does not mean you should say it the same way because you don't know who is going to interview you. I'm just telling you what I feel and some things that I said. I cannot even remember. Almost, I cannot remember everything that I said though. But this is just the basic. So you can make your own research. So they ask what is safeguarding. Safeguarding is the action that is taken to promote welfare and protect adults and children from harm. So they will ask you your own understanding of safeguarding. This is my own understanding of safeguarding. Instead of talking plenty and end up saying rubbish, it's better you keep it simple. What is confidentiality? See, when it comes to confidentiality, it has to do with their information, their private information, their personal information. So confidentiality is about respect and privacy. Seeking permission before letting out information that has to do with clients when they don't give you permission and you shouldn't proceed you can also give example the fact that the, the this is the client's sister and she's asking you questions personal questions that does not mean you should answer because they are sisters you don't know if the clients want her to know about it know when to talk and when not to talk so guys they can also ask you what is dignity in care or respect in care both of them works hand in hand so you should know how to answer that you can just simply say um working in line with their self-respect knowing their capability and ambition you should know what clients can do and what client cannot do then support them in what they cannot do so maybe clients tell they tell you that they want to use the restroom you know they can go there you now go and bring wheelchair to put them in and take them there no they need assistance maybe they can just hold on to you or you can assist them in getting up then they can walk there don't assume that they cannot do it so guys they can also ask you scenario questions yeah they want to know your experience if you really have experience and how you would other clients when issues arises that's what i mean by scenario questions they may ask you if you have a client and your client refuses to wash what are you going to do about it <laughs> if you think of the question you'll be like what am i going to do about it what am i supposed to do about it when a client does not allow you to bait them to touch them and stuff like that what are you going to do? So in this kind of scenario, you will ask the client, why don't you want me to wash you? So now this is your reason why they don't want you to wash you. You have to start with, um, I get this a lot at my place where I work, at my place where I used to work. And most times it's not because of me. That's why they don't want me to wash them because they feel that they are supposed to be doing it on their own. I try to encourage them. That is where your communication skills come in. Try to encourage them, support them. Try and try to encourage them, support them and let them know that this is temporary that over time they would start beating their their self again. So that's it. You have extra that you want to add. Just pick my own, add your own to it. I cannot basically remember everything that I said on that day. Because, guys, I really prepared for the interview. I knew questions like this was going to come. So, I read and I made some research too. So, I was ready for any questions that was coming my way. And I had experience on all these things. So, it's not hard. But one thing I should let you know is the questions. When they ask you questions... If you have example, give it to them. And when you are giving example, personalize it. In the, there was a time I attended to a client and the client refused me to bait him or her. Then I, her, since I'm a girl, the client refuses me to bait her. Then I had to, then the first thing I did was 
comfort her and ask why does she not want me to touch her or to bait her then she told me that she used to do this on her own and and most times i notice you understand that. so they might also ask you if you are baiting a client and she feels uncomfortable what are you going to do about it you ask first of all like why don't you want me to bait you see the reason if the reason is something you can handle you try and handle it you support them you comfort them let them know that this is temporary but if it's something that is beyond your power you call your employer or your manager so they will guide you on what to do is either they send someone else to come and take over or something but that one is not in your power because he doesn't want you to touch you because he does not like you what are you going to do you kill yourself so in that kind of scenario you should say something like that the vibes that i use in answering this question on my interview day is not the vibes i'm having now this breed of dog but i understand everything i know my role i know what i'm supposed to do but i'm trying to answer the question to my best to my best understanding now but then i really prepared for it I, so they might also ask you what do you do when you get into a client's house and you find your clients on the floor like your clients are falling down what would you do in that scenario in that kind of scenario if it was nigeria now you touch the client and raise the client up or you yeah, sit down but here in the uk you don't touch them why? Because you enter the client's house and you met the client on the floor. You don't know what happened that made the client to fall. So you cannot say you want to raise the client up. What if the client's bones are broken? So in the process of raising him or, him or her up, you are making it worse. So when you come to a client's house and you meet the client on the floor, you just, the first thing you should do is call the emergency number or call your manager during the process too you should also check around if there is any danger to answer it and also you can check if the client is still breathing you to check if somebody is breathing you don't have to touch the person any course you are doing in florence academy i would advise you take it seriously because these are the questions they are going to ask you so they might also ask you how to give cpr in my training i learned that when you meet a client on the floor unconscious and you know the client needs cpr and you don't give the client cpr and they do their investigation and find out that you are a, you are a healthcare assistant and you are present there and you did nothing about it they may they may arrest you they are going to arrest you and press charges because you know these things why did you not do it especially if it is your clients yeah so these are the basic things you need to know you see go and research on how to give cpr so if you are doing it to a woman whether you're a woman to woman or you're a man to woman you need to be careful not to touch their breasts or chest or stuff like that because trust me all these people we call it you're harassing them or um abuse sexual abuse or whatever you don't know the fact that you are saving life after saving the life you think oh all is well i pity you they will charge you for unnecessary things normally if it was nigeria if you like touch the breast if you like do whatever you want to do to the person but as far as you save the person the person will be grateful but here they will still let you know that there's a you can also save me without touching me you are harassing me blah blah stuff like that so guys you need to be careful when you are dealing with these people it's not easy those of you that want to come here as aka assistant hope you know what is waiting for you hope you know and please i want to beg guys don't message me on my email please so i can be able to see vital informations for my working place from other stuff too because the way you people are sending me message on my email when i start replying it turns it will turn into something else when know all these things when it comes to sending official messages to your email it has duration it has its own validity period when you exceed that period you have lost it and i don't want to be part of that so some of you are sending me your cv i should check it out see i've seen it even after checking it out i don't think i would want to reply you through email so please help me to help you 
drop a message for me on instagram and i will definitely reply you thank you so much for watching this video i hope you find this video very informative and i hope it guides you when you get a job and it's time for your interview thank you so much for watching bye guys